Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So if you've been in PC gaming for 20, 15, or even 10 years, you've noticed that things have been changing a lot in the community. And one of the biggest things is the way that reviews are done. This has been talked about on this channel before, just here recently, we were talking about the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte not having an MSRP and how that would affect reviews in the future. And if you guys have checked out our Techonomics podcast where we had Steve from Hardware Unboxed, he's been very worried about the trends that he's been seeing in this particular industry. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Kyle Bennett over at Hard OCP, he wrote a very good article about this. I want to thank Celso from Cortex for shouting this out. He sent this to me. And honestly, this article sums up a lot of the things that Paul and I have been talking about on the Technomics podcast in a much more coherent manner and also videos that each of us have done individually. So I want to kind of talk about the article a little bit. Uh, it's very long, so I do recommend you go and read it yourself. Links will be down in the description below. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about here today in this video. Are GPU reviews basically on the way out? Looks like they are, so let's discuss. So this article came out today, January 31st, that's when I'm recording this, written by Kyle Bennett. The status quo is no mo over here on Hard OCP. Links, once again, are down below. So this whole thing is just Kyle's thoughts, using his 20 plus years experience in this particular market, and tries to put things in perspective as to why we're seeing things, for example, like the RTX 20 or 3080 12 gigabyte not having an MSRP. And he personally believes that MSRPs will go away. So I'm not gonna read this whole thing, it's very long, I will show you. I have read the whole article, it's very good, I recommend you do so, and then come back to this video, and then we you'll actually know what I'm talking about through and through. But I do wanna to touch on a few things in here because uh, I think it's important. So Kyle, he fully believes that we will see uh, more GPU launches, if not all, in the future from both AMD and NVIDIA where they will not state the MSRP or SEP. I'm just gonna call it MSRP because that's that's what everybody calls it. So basically he believes that neither company is gonna bother with this. Now why would they just stop making prices? It's because AMD and NVIDIA don't like bad press, plain and simple. They don't want to deal with it. And honestly, by not stating an MSRP, they're going to get some flack for that. But over time, if that becomes the norm, they will no longer catch flack for that. And if AMD and NVIDIA are going to uh, weather this bad press, so basically not doing MSRPs, uh, starting that right now is exactly the right time for it to happen. And I kind of agree. Right now, everybody's like, MSRPs don't mean anything. They're worthless. So if they want to transition and get people used to basically a worse way of doing things, now's the best time because they're going to catch flack anyway. Now, what's the benefit to these companies? It's also a great value for AMD and NVIDIA to have no stated MSRPs. This allows both companies to have much more flexibility when it comes to their dynamic BOM, uh, which he does go over the bill of materials. If you're a regular on the channel, you do know what that is already. It's basically the GPU die, the RAM, and any of the bits that they sell to AIBs. So basically, if there is no fixed MSRP, they can change prices on the fly. They themselves can also capitalize on really perilous markets like we're seeing right now. Another variable that gets removed from the review cycle is hardware reviewers will no longer be able to compare past cards with a true price point to price point focus. So basically you can't have a dollar for dollar comparison anymore if you don't know what the thing's gonna cost. So for example, if the RTX 4080 is gonna come out and it's like, yeah, well, this card is let's say 40% faster than the 3080, that looks good. That's what we typically expect. It's actually a little bit higher. But, you know, it can come out at double the price, but nobody knows, so they can't actually do anything about that. And as he mentions, this removes a critical part of most reviewers' process when it comes to comparison and data points. If I would actually argue it eliminates uh, comparison. If you can't actually go, this thing is X amount faster and costs X amount more, therefore it is worth the price, you're basically just doing uh, a product overview. That's what I call it. When you just go new thing faster than old thing, yay. That's just a product overview, which is exactly what he talks about in the article. Ultimately, this will relieve pressure for both AMD and NVIDIA, 
And realistically, as I mentioned before, it's basically NVIDIA's market now that they have 85, 86% of the market. Uh, but regardless, from stating these prices and then get their feet held to the fire by reviewers when the cards do not show in retail at those prices. Yeah, this way there, there's no bad press. If they don't tell you a price, even if the 4080 in my previous example was double the price of the 3080 or even the 3090, it doesn't really matter because they never told you a price. So it just is what it is instead of it being, hey, you lied. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So hardware reviewers becoming old news. So this is what Steve from Hardware Unboxed is very worried about. So this is a real thing that reviewers are paying attention to. So if you get rid of the MSRP, basically reviews are worthless, which is what I said in my previous video. I'll put a link to that down below too if you wanna check that one out. Kyle likens it to print magazines, how they're a thing of the past. So he also believes long form hardware reviews and in-depth YouTube hardware reviews will also go largely extinct. Now, obviously some people will stick around and there's still ways to go around it, but he just believes that these companies are gonna look at the ROI, so the return on investment and go, we no longer need you to go ahead and promote our products because people don't really care that much. Now, there's a lot of very interesting information in here. He goes over his opinions. Um, like I said, I strongly recommend you read it yourself, but mostly if you just want the short version of this, he's just saying that customers today are not as critical as they used to be, and essentially going into deep dives are no longer necessary to go ahead and sell product. Instead, he basically believes what Steve does is that the influencers out there will start getting them. So essentially he believes what, instead of reviews you'll get, you'll get simpler content such as users unboxings, sponsored videos where basically they just say whatever they're told to say, uh, streams, TikToks, and these generate huge numbers in terms of market exposure, which is very, very true. We all know that this is, they get a lot more views than your average tech video, especially in-depth ones get, or generally to begin with when it comes to negative product messaging and churn. So basically, in, if you just do these, you're never going to have a bad review because it's just, hey, here's product. Get excited for product, buy new product. It's There is no actual review there. There is no comparison. There's no critical thinking. That's really what it is, is taking away the critical thinking. And this will be a huge win-win-win for AMD and NVIDIA in terms of resources, ROI, positive branding to younger generations and product exposure. So already guys, that might seem very pessimistic, but as I've mentioned, this is something that real reviewers have concern about. Like I said, it came up on the Technomics podcast with Steve from Hardware Unbox just the other day. He's afraid that these influencers are basically going to replace them. And Kyle's basically saying, yep, that's gonna happen. The removal of MSRP is going to basically nullify reviews because they can't actually do a review. This is what I was saying. This is what a lot of us have been saying here for a while. Once we saw the 2060 uh, 12 gigabyte come out and now with the 3080 12 gigabyte coming out and likely if the 3090 Ti actually is a thing, they will do the same thing with that. So they're just starting getting people gradually used to this being the new way of things going. Now, in terms of influencers, you might be going, well, what are you talking about? How does this work? So there's a channel called G-Man Lives. He does game reviews. He checks out mostly first person shooters, which I enjoy. Um, and I really like his channel. But I remember a few years ago, Nvidia just sent him an RTX 2070. And I can't remember what graphics card he had before that. It was either a 1070 or a 1080, but regardless, the 2070 was faster. So he didn't do a review on the product. Basically what he did was he popped in the 2070 and just talked about it. And guess what happens when you get a 2070 over like a 1080 or something? It's faster, it has more features, it's, it's a better card. So his whole video was, yeah, this is a good card. It's better than what I had before. There wasn't a lot of critical analysis there. It was more like checking out features. Hey, let's take a look at some ray tracing, see how that goes, check out DLSS, blah, 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 blah. It was not what we would consider to be a real review. That is an influencer in that particular instance. It's somebody who does not look at the data critically, but instead just goes, hey, they sent me this thing, maybe paid him. I, I don't remember if it was sponsored or not. Um, but regardless, he said nice things about the card because it's better than his other thing because he doesn't have 50 other graphics cards to compare it to. 
So this to NVIDIA and AMD, according to Kyle, is a much better allocation of their resources. This is a much better way for them to spend their money because he gets three, 400, 500,000 views per video, basically on par with the top echelon of the PC hardware enthusiast market. So basically they can just send out a card to anybody having a weaker card and just go, hey, just talk about this compared to your last product. And that's it. That's all we want you to do. Just compare it to what you had before. And that's it. And don't talk about anything specific like pricing or, or whatnot. Don't think about it too much. Just let them know how much you like this more than your last thing. So for like the hardware unboxes and the gamers nexuses of the world that really get into that nitty gritty, they may just not get sampled anymore. And by the time that they do get a sample in, they can go out and buy them. Um, you know, it'll probably be two or three days later and the initial inventory is already gone. As the influencers out there go, hey, new thing faster, buy new thing. That's basically all reviews will be because they're not really reviews. It would just be influenced. And that's exactly what I mentioned in my last video. Kyle's just saying that he believes that that's exactly where they want it to go because for them as a company, this is a good thing. It will make them more money. They don't get the critical analysis. You don't have 6,500 XT reviews that people talk about three or four weeks later because it's just not a good product at that price point. You eliminate the price point, well, now you have no, no comparison. So imagine if the 6500 XT came out, had no MSRP. We'd all be like, this market's nuts. Why are they paying these prices for these? This should be like a $150 card. Well, AMD could be like, we agree, but you know, it is what it is. This is what the market decided. So it basically absolves them entirely on this particular front. And it, it just allows them to skirt around these things. Now, the one area where I think Kyle kind of misses the mark is this only works in a monopoly, which I keep telling you guys, in my opinion, the discrete graphics card market is a monopoly. NVIDIA has more than 80% market share. It's a monopoly, especially when there's only one other competitor out there. Um, last report, it was like 84, 85%. So they own the majority of it. Regardless, for them, they can just go ahead and keep doing what they're doing because there is no real competition. As I've mentioned many times, AMD is clearly not trying to compete with NVIDIA. They're just trying to make as much money as humanly possible. But this opens up the door to competition. I actually sent Kyle an email, and the one thing that he's missing and these companies are missing if they do go this route is customer satisfaction. This is more important to a company long term, especially when there's competition, than actual margins. Obviously, you have to make money, but if you have an extremely high customer satisfaction rate and you have low margins, you're gonna stay in business. Now, if you have kind of a balance, and that's what it is, it's a balancing act between margin dollars and customer satisfaction, uh, you know, as long as it's good, you're gonna be okay. Now, if you have horrible customer satisfaction and really, really high margins, that's only gonna work until another competitor enters the market. And this is really where Intel could be extremely disruptive. If this is the path that Nvidia and AMD do really want to go, if Intel goes, we're not going to do that. We're going to set MSRPs. We are going to hold AIBs accountable. They have an absolute maximum price point that they can sell to retailers. And then if Intel notices retailers go, oh, well, that's cool. We can charge you know three times the price and people will pay it. Intel can then hold retailers accountable. Intel's a mega company. They can hold all of these guys accountable. In fact, they can actually make them sign contracts before they even receive product to sell. And you know it could be five, 10%, 20% margin, whatever it happens to be that they agree upon. And if anybody violates that, Intel will sue the pants off of a new egg or an Amazon or whatever. It's free money to them. What do they care? You know, they'll just sue the pants off of these guys and, and take them to court. If Intel does that, not saying that they will, but if they were to go that route, that will buy a lot of goodwill in the community. And this will instantly remove a huge customer base from NVIDIA and AMD. So whether it's Intel or possibly another competitor out there, let's say Intel just falls in line with NVIDIA and AMD and does the same things. This still leaves room for a customer focused company to step in and steal large portions of the market share. It'll either force these companies to basically backtrack completely on their current practices, monopolistic practices, or 
they will go out of business, essentially, over a long enough timeline. So, like I said, it seems a little bit more dire when you read the article because it is the trend that we're on. It is what people are worried about. Steve from Hardware Unbox is concerned about this. This is a big concern. We've talked about this privately. We've talked about it publicly. So this is the direction where things are going. I do think that it would be a temporary thing because no market can bear basically one company going, we're going to do whatever we want. We're going to charge whatever we want forever. It just opens up too much room for competition, especially in a multi-billion dollar industry. There are other multi-trillion dollar companies out there that would be like, yeah, I could use an extra 10, 20 billion dollars a year in revenue as long as the numbers jive. Now, obviously, Intel being the new big fish in the market, everybody's going to wait and see how that all shakes out. But if they want to come in and be super disruptive, and if AMD and NVIDIA continue down the path that they're on, Intel's going to be highly successful, far more successful than they ever would have been if NVIDIA just didn't do all this stupid thing. Same thing with AMD. If these companies just continue to operate as per usual, where products come in, they meet demand. If they can't meet demand, it is what it is. They do what they can to try to make that happen and mitigate it as much as possible. For AMD, that would be, be significantly less expensive than their NVIDIA counterparts. Keep pushing the market that way. They're kind of there now. AMD cards, at least at retail, are significantly lower than their NVIDIA counterparts at this point in time. Uh, but regardless, if they were competing with each other properly in a real market, Intel would have a much harder time of breaking in. So yeah, all eyes right now are on Intel. And once again, if Intel, in my opinion, if Intel does not basically correct this trend that we're currently on, another company down the road will. So to me, it's one of those, yes, things are bad. And if we allow them to go this way, and if there is no other competitor that comes in, we're basically screwed. Uh, but reviewers out there and the tech community, PC enthusiasts, you guys, you have to be vocal about this. You have to get people on board uh, and, and basically get people to think critically about how they spend their money. This whole thing of it's your money, you do whatever you want, it's technically true. But if you do something bad with your money and it affects me, I have every right to tell you not to spend your money, in my opinion. And that's been my take pretty much since I started the channel. Once I saw Pascal trying to push prices to a new tier, that's right. I was bitching about Pascal prices uh, because they were significantly higher than they were previous generation. So this has been a trend going on for a long time. And if the community allows this to happen or if Intel does not come in and just take the win, basically that NVIDIA and AMD are just handing to them, um, things could get really, really bad. And this could be the end of the PC gaming market as we've known it up until this point. It will become a new thing. And that's what Kyle's article is basically talking about. He believes that that is the future. Uh, Intel's the X factor and the customer satisfaction index is really going to be a big factor here. Uh, if none of the companies in this small industry don't, if they just don't care about the customers, then like I said, somebody needs to come in and take that because that is how you take market leadership away from a current market leader. But we'll see how it goes. I know I'm just kind of repeating myself now, but I want to really hammer it home that that is the key to success. It's not about shareholders. Companies do have to satiate shareholders, but they can't do that if their customers are not happy with their products and not happy with how they do business. And that's where you come in. You have to let them know you're not happy about these things and tell them what you want them to do because it's their job to do what you want. Otherwise, their shareholders don't get money. You're the boss, not them. You're more important than Jensen to NVIDIA because without you, they go out of business. If Jensen gets fired or leaves, guess what? NVIDIA keeps on going. So you're way more important. You're way more important than their shareholders. All those guys can leave. But if you leave, these guys go out of business. So you got to let them know that. And it's basically just about the balance of power. And these companies are abusing their position as being essentially monopolies. So take that power back, let them know, be vocal, make your own videos, comment on other people's videos, get your favorite creators to start talking about these things, share this article around, read it, understand it, and uh, hopefully, just like with GPP that Kyle broke a long time ago, 
We can stop these guys from continuing to do practices that are harmful to you, me, and the entire PC gaming community. So alrighty guys, that's all I have for you here today. Links for everything are down below. Make sure you click on those. I know this is kind of a, more of a ranty type video, but this is important. This is very important if you enjoy this hobby and you want to continue to enjoy this hobby. So that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.